Welcome to ASRS's Journal of Vitreoretinal Diseases Authors Forum. I'm your host, Dr. Timothy Murray, Editor-in-Chief of JVRD. On each episode of the JVRD Authors Forum, I will interview innovative retinal researchers on their studies featured only in JVRD and how these studies will impact our patients' care in our clinics. Tune in to hear directly from investigators about the clinical implications of the newest and highest quality research in the field of retina. Welcome to the JVRD Authors Forum. I'm joined today by Dr. Ella Lung, who's going to be speaking to us on her recent paper, Opportunity Cost in Vitreoretinal Surgery. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're using you know this time to kind of understand a little better um, the use of opportunity cost. Many of us um, have some business experience and understand that tool, but many of us, uh, uh, us, us don't. So could you give me an idea of what opportunity cost means overall? Sure, so everything um, in medicine is nowadays regular, is broken down into like what can you spend your time doing and what is the revenue that is generated and in order to cover for um, overhead costs and things like that. So um, for our paper, we're trying to look at opportunity costs in the sense that from the surgeon's perspective. So if you're in the operating room, how much money or revenue um, or productivity are you generating versus if you were in the clinic during the exact same time period. And what we did was we looked at it over the global period, meaning the 90 days, for, so not only the surgery itself, but the pre-op, the actual surgery, and for the 90 day global period afterwards, what would you have done in clinic if you were not operating on that patient? And so we kind of compared what the productivity is for the those two and the opportunity cost is, well, how much would you have made or generated in the clinic versus in the OR? And we did find a significant difference. So in the past, my understanding is that, that our greatest um, revenue stream was typically from the operating room and that anything that, that took us away from the operating room generated essentially a negative opportunity cost. Um, so what were you thinking you were going to find? So. I wasn't sure. We wanted to go in with very neutral expectations. We didn't want it to bias our results one way or the other. Because you're right, in the past it was the OR that generated the most money. But then that was partly because they were hospitalized for long periods of time and, and reimbursements, to be honest, were a lot higher. Um, CMS has, you know, and all the payers and everything else has been slowly cutting back on physician reimbursements over the years. Um, plus there's inflation as well to account for. And so when we actually ran the numbers, nowadays, surgery actually results in a significant opportunity cost, meaning it costs a surgeon more money to be in the OR than in the clinic. They could have seen a lot more patients in that period of time and could have helped a lot more people, to be honest, than doing surgeries. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't do surgeries, right? It's one of those things that obviously we want to help everyone, um, but it is coming with certain sacrifices as well. And, it, and it's true now, too, that what we do in clinic has a very um, different reimbursement differential than it did in the past. Many of us are doing injection therapy and, and coupling that with our clinical practice that generates revenue that didn't occur in our clinics. Did that play a role when you looked at opportunity cost? Yes, you're absolutely right. So when we looked at the Vestrum um, Real World Database, we looked at how what the average work RVUs would have been in the clinic per patient or per clinical encounter. And so because we're such a procedure heavy field with injections, lasers and everything else, it does mean that it favors clinic more in terms of generating revenue to cover overhead costs and things like that than it would be in the OR. And let's be honest, we've all been in the OR at three o'clock in the morning, you know, with an hour turnover time, like waiting for our globe to start. And that's time that, you know, is lost. Is lost. Yeah. So um, you brought up an interesting point too of how you were able to access your data. So you used a registry. Can you explain why that registry played as significant a role for you as it does? Sure. So instead of just using theories and calculating, you know, hypothetical situations, it was 
the nice thing about electronic medical records, we could actually take actual numbers, like these are what people are actually billing in order to get us a m more robust understanding of what's going on in the real world. And so when we did our calculations, we actually included graphs that included what we thought was an average possible, you know, like certain number of patients that an average surgeon might see in a certain time that they would be operating. And we also did it for high and low so that everyone can look at the paper and everyone can look at the graphs and be like, okay, where do I fall in this? What is my personal opportunity cost to be in the OR compared to someone else? So, so you know, when we look at manuscripts and, and we, we look at the data, that's an important component to say, how can I extrapolate from this data to, to my practice or how can I generalize this in my, in my clinic? So I think the modeling that you did really allows us to have a better opportunity to use that data. So the other thing that's important is, you know, there, we, we hear a lot about registry data Iris registry data, which is of course very powerful, but but Vestrum's interesting in that it really focuses on retina. So did that make this kind of analysis easier for you? I think it's nice. Anything that's electronic, and I think that's the nice thing about electronic medical records in general. Right? I'm not sitting through a million giant stacks of charts, like trying to go through every single billing sheet and everything else. So it makes it a lot more meaningful when we can have millions of data points. So like the Vestrum database, right, has millions. The IRS registry has millions of data points. And I think anything with big data sets helps us. Now, obviously, there's still the same, like, we don't get the nitty gritty. Like, we're getting, you know, the billing data. But we're not actually getting how much is the insurance, you know, actually compensating physician. Like, that information we don't necessarily have. And that's going to be true for any registry database, you know, large electronic medical records. You're going to have certain limitations of getting the nitty gritty. I do think the benefit of the ones that we used was it is retina specific. And so we can get a lot more data from that. And when you looked at that, I thought it was interesting, too, because you also um, noted that, you know, when we're in our clinic, we are in a relatively controlled environment for us. But when we move into an ASC and even maybe more so into an operating theater in a hospital-based setting, we lose a lot of ability to control the steps in, in the process. How does that impact opportunity cost? So when we were looking at it, we basically looked at it from an ASC standpoint because we wanted to be comparing it in like the least favorable light. Does that make sense? So like yes. we were trying to say, okay, if you are in a well-run ASC, how would that compare to being in a well-run clinic? Because we all know hospitals are wonderful. We need them for our sick patients and things like that. And they're great if you have big traumas and stuff. But generally speaking, you know, it's not quite as efficient and nice. Um, although there's certainly good hospitals out there that are like that. I think it's if we were to include other things like hospital costs, if we were to include um, complication, that's one of the things that we wanted to try to be as, I guess, conservative in our estimates as possible. So we excluded com um, complications, we excluded hospitals, we exclude anything that looked like it would skew the numbers in a certain direction. I think if we included all that practice expense, right, that makes up 45% of the costs and things like that, if we actually included those, the analysis would actually favor surgery even less in comparison to clinics. And you know, people wonder why do we do this and what does it mean, but there are, um, in training programs, that's having an impact on how people view retina specialty, how people think about medical versus surgical retina. Um, do you think we have we, we have to have a concern for how data like this gets used? I think you're 100% correct. Um, and it's something in general for our field overall that when people start looking at the numbers and the comparisons, right? I mean, let's be honest, med students have huge debts to pay, right? Like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of debt. They're, when they're starting out, they're getting paltry, I mean, not paltry, but you know, it, in comparison Relatively to the amount, paltry. in comparison to how much they work, you know, like, you know, we've all known that those salaries are not quite in, com you know, in, in relation to what they work. Correct. And they still have to pay their bills and they have families to take care of. So I think one of the concerns, um, when they looked at med student choices for specialties, and this across all specialties, not just ophthalmology, 
the ability to make enough for their families to be comfortable, like, you know, that does factor into it. I, you know, it sounds very harsh that we are considering compensation in our decision, but it, it's, unfortunately it's... I'm older, so that's shocking because I think that, that many of us that went into academic practice early, there, there wasn't really a, a, a focus on compensation, but I do think we've become a lot more aware of, of what it means to be in, a, in a, an opportunity to balance your life and your family and your career and make it work. And it does seem that that's brought a different focus. And, and not that I think that's a negative focus at all. Um, but I do think that what you've given us is more data to help us make a, a valid choice and to better understand. For example, we can't stop operating. You and I both know that there are patients who without surgery are, are going to be blind and, and there's probably very little more disabling than that. But I think it allows us to have better discussions about how we prioritize resource. So I wanna thank you very much, excellent paper. They can read the full details in JVRD itself, but you discussed it beautifully. So Dr. Long, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to the JVRD Authors Forum. You can watch and listen to more episodes on the ASRS YouTube channel and on popular podcast directories, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Visit www.asrs.org forward slash JVRD forum on the ASRS website to learn more. See you soon.